Howdy folks, I'm back. It's time for our live. It's 12 o'clock. It is Sunday and I am super excited to be able to connect and dance with you all. Um, hopefully y'all are having a great weekend as you get settled in and log into our live. Please drop a note in the chat and say hi. Let me know uh, where you're logging in from and let me know what you're up to this weekend. It is a gorgeous, gorgeous weekend here in Houston. Which so awesome, Kathy from Massachusetts, I love it. We've got Germany in the house, South Africa in the house. It is not sunny, it is, it's 8 p.m. Oh my gosh, thank you for joining us. I really appreciate you being here. This is fantastic, awesome. I'm just gonna jump right into our shimmies. What I'd like to talk about, this is kind of stemming from a conversation that we had recently within the group where I was asking people um, what they're working on, what's challenging them, what's going on in their dance world right now. And many of you mentioned shimmies, which was great. So this is a common theme for a lot of people's dancing right now. Help me remember, I have several of you who are in my shimmy package on Teachable. I have a lot of videos there that will help you take this information and take it to the next level. Uh, so if you manage to grab that shimmy package or you're a Rhinestone subscriber and you get that, it's all there. And then I also have a couple of drills on YouTube. So let's chat and talk some theory first before we put on music and actually dance. So the chat today, so if we're talking about shifting weight, we're gonna talk about what I consider to be like my favorite, my bedrock, the shimmy I use all the time, which I call the Egyptian shimmy, right? This shimmy is the one where we're thinking about bringing our knees all the way to the back. And I think about it as kind of movement as though the back of my knees were bouncing off of like a little trampoline that's right behind me, yeah? So I'm thinking about this, hopefully y'all can see me. I see one of my, Things have frozen, but I think I'm good here. So I'm thinking about my knees kind of bouncing off of a little trampoline behind me. Uh, my legs are, are straight, right? So the bend that happens is minimal and my knees are coming to straight. This shimmy manifests itself in my body as like a bit of a right? So watch out for the expectation that your hips are going to go up and down when you do this shimmy, because that's going to be a different shimmy. Yeah, this shimmy is more of a, uh, of a vibration. I'm going to wiggle in the belly. I get some wiggle in the thighs. I want to keep really relaxed. Here's a good, uh, a good piece of advice that helped me a ton when I started really working on my shimmy, because this is one of those things the first 12 years of my dance career, my shimmy was meh at And I found that when I finally relaxed, loosened up, and slowed that things really started to, to help me. So watch out with this for tension, for fast movement, for vibration. We think shimmy, we think fast, but it doesn't have to be that way. So just keep that in mind through all day. We're relaxing, breathing, relaxing, and keeping it as loose and wobbly as you can, right? So we're talking Egyptian shimmy. So this is the one I use to layer most of the time, but I use it in conjunction with other shimmies depending on what I'm layering. So I'm using this to, to layer. So if I'm layering on something, say a hip slide, something where my knees don't really change position in a vertical direction, right? They stay the same amount of bent or straight. It's a layering concept, layering your Egyptian shimmy on a figure eight. Your which can be a challenge, but my knees are not changing, right? I'm not going from more bent to less bent. So when you're talking about this, you want to work on it and you want to layer it on things, a really good thing to practice is taking your Egyptian shimmy and playing with it uh, with different weight shifts, right? Shifting my weight over, say, to your left, shifting your weight over. I'm not sure if I'm mirrored or not in this camera right now. Shifting my weight over to the other side shifting my weight back to the center, shifting it out over my toes, right? Pushing my pelvis forward, taking my hips slightly back, putting my weight into my heels and playing with that and being aware of where you find hiccups, right? Not being judgmental of, but being aware of, oh, you know, when I go to the right, it works okay, but when I go to the left, my shimmy stops. Or when my weight goes into my toes, then it gets kind of funky, right? Being aware of that and working the spots, ironing out the spots where your shimmy seems to hiccup all the while breathing and keeping it as loose as you can. Today, when we shimmy, I'm going to challenge you to shimmy really slowly. 
Yeah. How far apart should your feet be? Good question. I think that's probably slightly individual depending on your like hip girdle and how your body is constructed. Uh, I always encourage my students to have their feet right beneath like where their hip bone aligns straight down. But especially if you're early on in your shimmy journey and you're trying to find that sweet spot where it works, had like one spot where it worked and no other spots worked, play around with it, right? Obviously like feet give you a very good um, base for balance. So watch out for that. And obviously like too far apart, I always say it's, it's another dance and you get paid more, right? But like, I want you to think about right around this idea of like the hip bones down from there. But depending on how your body is constructed, depending on the size and shape of your thighs, you might want to be a little bit wider. Uh, and does it matter? I think as I, I think you'll find something will work best for you in the beginning. Go with that first. Get the easy win, build your confidence, and then like, you know, if this works for you, great. For a while, I could only really shimmy well if my weight was in my heels. And then eventually I got to where I could shimmy even when my weight was in my toes. So find where it works for you where it works for you drill it so you feel awesome about it and then branch out right what is going on so what do I mean triple it shimmy not being a three-quarter so how many of you give me a give me a hand in the chat if you learned your three-quarter shimmy really slow like this right you did one and two what they called the three-quarter shimmy as you do it like this it's totally a three-quarter and when I do it like this I call this a slow three-quarter shimmy because it's not really a shimmy it's a double bump right but I'm going one two three pause one two three pause right I'm accenting three fourth is silent one two three nothing one two three nothing yeah so it's three out of four it's a three-quarter now here's the sticky wicket when you speed it up Almost every teacher I've ever studied with takes out the pause, but doesn't really tell you. And it becomes this, da 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 Same idea, double bump, right? Two bumps on one side as I'm weighted on one side, I get a bump and a release and a bump, but there's no longer a pause. And I think this is why so many people struggle with, if I were to just take that three quarter shimmy that we did slowly and speed it up, Gonna get is da da dum 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 da da dum, and I see this all the time in the classroom, and it's a valid shimmy, but it's one that I never use. I don't ever use it because it's like fast and stilted, and feels to me like it's faster than it needs to be. Like if I'm gonna go that fast, why do I want the pause? But I'll give you an example where I do it in just a second. So here's a true three quarter shimmy. Up one two three. One, two, three, one, two, three, or it'd be and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. Gallop on the zills, right? Except we call that a triplet for some reason. When I speed up the slow three-quarter shimmy and take it into a shimmy that I'm going to travel with, to be, I almost always travel with it. I love to travel with it. I take out the pause and it becomes a triplet shimmy. Thusly, I can go much slower, take my time, and make it really big. Da 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 dee da 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 dee da 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 dee da 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 dee da da, right? Triple it, 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 triple it. This changed my shimmy for the better forever once I realized that I had more time. My challenge for you today is to breathe and to relax, and maybe even if you have to do a little, a little brain. A brain tease on yourself like don't think of it as a fast shimmy think of it as like a a wobble yeah we're gonna wobble to get it nice and relaxed yeah all right so we're just gonna start with our Egyptian shimmy and I want you to relax nice and slow take a deep breath up all right doesn't have to be big I just want it to be relaxing I want it to feel good make it feel good yeah smile breathe all right now yay to get into those hips. Don't make, relax. It's Sunday. This is easy Sunday belly dancing, yeah? <laughs> Keep it nice and relaxed in those hips. And breathe. And now try to find that middle ground, right? Where is like a little halfway between? My knees are not quite as bent. They almost come to straight. And my shimmy is not quite as hippy, right? Gets a little bit more of that jiggle back in there. Take a nice deep and try to layer it on top of our inner hip roll. 
going to make you go really slow because it's harder that way. Yeah, because then you can become very aware you have any gaps or hiccups today, right? Because tomorrow might be different. Scoop it up, slide it through, plie, push out, scoop it up, and slide it through. Can you keep it relaxed and slow? Mine wants to speed up, relaxed and slow and gooey. So three quarter, one and two, three and four. This has a pause. But when we speed it up, we're gonna take out the pause and make it a triplet. Keep one and two, three and four. Just a couple more with the slow three quarter. Knees are bent, there's a pause at the end of each repetition. Now we're gonna speed it up, take out the pause. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. One and two, one and two, one and two, one and two. Triple it, triple it, triple it, triple it. No pause. Take your time and breathe. 